Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to take a look at mRNA, or messenger RNA. In this video, we are specifically going to look at where mRNA is found, what it does, and what its role is in the body. In order to better understand what mRNA is and what it does, we need to take a look at where it comes from. First off, we need to talk about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids include both DNA and RNA. In my video on biology, large biological molecules, chapter five, I have a more in-depth discussion as to what nucleic acids are and the big differences between DNA and RNA. However, for this video, I will say that DNA is a double-stranded molecule, while RNA is single-stranded. DNA is the genetic or hereditary information that parents pass down to their offspring. This genetic information codes for everything that is found in a given organism. DNA has the ability to make copies of itself as in DNA replication, which I talk about in detail in another video. And this ability that DNA has to make copies of itself allows for individual cells to reproduce. DNA also has the ability to direct RNA synthesis and produce RNA. Once RNA is produced, it can then direct protein synthesis, also known as gene synthesis. But where do these processes happen? Let's take a look at the cell. In the middle of the cell is where we see the nucleus. In the nucleus is where we will find the DNA. DNA itself is too large to leave the nucleus of the cell, so it will always stay within the nucleus. In the nucleus is where DNA replication can take place, where DNA makes a copy of itself. In the nucleus is also where DNA can direct the synthesis of RNA. The process of synthesizing RNA from DNA is known as transcription. Just like DNA replication, transcription also occurs within the nucleus of the cell. Once RNA is synthesized from DNA, it can then leave the nucleus through the nuclear pores and enter into the cytoplasm. This is where protein synthesis can take place. Going from RNA to protein is known as translation. These three processes are known as the central dogma of biology, in which we take the instructions from the DNA and convert them into a functional product by going from DNA to RNA to protein. So where does mRNA come into play? This RNA that we are referring to, uh, which makes the protein during the process of translation, is actually mRNA. When RNA is transcribed from DNA, this is to make proteins. So this is just transcribing a very small portion of the DNA, and therefore RNA products are much smaller than DNA itself. This is why RNA can leave the nucleus of the cell. When RNA is first transcribed from DNA, it is referred to as pre-mRNA or a precursor mRNA. In order for pre-mRNA to become mRNA, it needs to be processed through a series of steps. These steps occur within the nucleus of the cell. If we look at a pre-mRNA molecule, we'll notice that it has both introns and exons. One of the first steps that needs to occur is that all the introns have to be removed, keeping all the exons together. These exons are known as the protein coding region. The removal of these introns, or the splicing that occurs to put these exons together, also allows for the diversity that we see within mRNA. This allows for different proteins to be made, a topic for another video. The other steps that need to occur in order to make this pre-mRNA molecule a mature mRNA molecule is the addition of a 5' prime cap and a 3' prime poly A tail. Once these modifications have been made, the mRNA is then now ready to move from the nucleus into the cytoplasm in order for protein synthesis to occur. 
Once this mature mRNA leaves the nucleus and enters into the cytoplasm of the cell, it will attach to an organelle known as a ribosome. This ribosome is made up of rRNA. The small subunit of the ribosome has three binding sites, an amino acid site, a polypeptide site, and an exit site. The AUG is the start codon of the mRNA. You'll see that right here. So the first part of the mRNA is actually not even translated. So what's going to happen first is that the correct tRNA molecule, these right here that are sticking out are tRNAs, these tRNA molecules, the first one is going to come in and it's going to bind with this AUG. Um, so what's going to happen is that the mRNA is going to be read in triplets and or they're referred to as codons and the tRNA has an anticodon so it is going to match up with the codon of the RNA. So A will match up with the U, the U with the A, and then the G with the C. So the first start is going to be the AUG of the mRNA. It's going to be the start and the tRNA is going to come in and bind and it is going to drop off the first amino acid up here um, that we see. And that first amino acid is always going to be methionine. This process is going to continue on in where another tRNA is going to come that matches up with the next codon. So the tRNA again has the anticodon to the codon on the mRNA. Now each tRNA anticodon always will carry the same amino acid so that the same protein can be made from the specific mRNAs. So this is a very specific process. As the tRNAs continue to come into the ribosome, it is going to build up this amino acid chain, creating a polypeptide and then eventually a protein. Once a stop codon is reached, the amino acid chain or polypeptide chain is going to be released from the ribosomes. There are three different stop codons or termination codons that can be found on the mRNA. They are either UAA, UAG, or UGA. These are codons that the tRNAs cannot recognize and because of this, this allows the release of the protein. Now, once the protein is made, it can then go on to do its job. A lot of proteins do need post-translational modifications, in which case things will be added onto that protein. The proteins also need to be folded into their proper shape in order to function correctly. Hopefully this gives you some sort of an idea of how we can go from DNA to RNA to protein and how mRNA is a very essential component in making proteins. Without mRNA, we would not then have the code in order to make the specific proteins that are found within the body. I hope that you enjoyed watching my video. If you like this video and its content, please subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on a new video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment in the box below. Thank you.